Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, in, in, in your experience in, in, in foreign services, do you recall a similar example where countries aspiring uh, for statehood were recognized by friendly countries without resorting uh, to the United Nations or regional bodies or, or organizations? In other words, like countries directly recognizing other countries because of mutual understanding of or, or benefit. Do you well, recall I, anything like that? Yeah. One of the examples is uh, Western Sahara or the Sahara uh, Arab Democratic Republic which uh, declared independence. Some countries recognized it, others did not. There's still a controversy going on because it's been incorporated into Morocco. Algeria certainly has not accepted that. There are other you know, prime examples. I mean, and then you look across at the, the ocean to the, to the greatest example, which is the one China policy that everybody looks at, but Taiwan acts like an independent country and we'll see how the Taiwanese elections come out to see where the history of that will go, you know, will go forward. The example I cited before was, which is the country of Eritrea, which went by the book because at the time, you know, Ethiopia supported the concept of Eritrean independence because it was obvious that, you know, 99% of the people in Eritrea supported that. And it would be so much easier if Somalia you know, took the the same course that Ethiopia did with Eritrea and just accepted reality that Somaliland is a is a separate independent country and is not going back into into sharing a household with Somalia. Ambassador, just to uh, reiterate a point, um, Somaliland is not succeeding from Somalia. There was a report that the um, African Union did about Somaliland on two thousand five that Somalia is a unique case in that it's not seceding from Somalia, it's re- re- reclaiming its independence, right. its independence territory from 1960 borders. It's different from all these other cases that you mentioned in the sense that it was a country that reunited with Somalia, just like Gambia and Senegal, and has the, the right to reclaim its independence recognition and, and, and recognize its 1960 borders. It's different in that case, just for you, it's for the audience. It's important to not use the word secession. It was more a dis- dissolution of, of the joining. Uh, Ambassador, just following up on that question of, you know, countries sort of finding mutually beneficial, like, you know, interest and in actually recognizing one another that way. In the current memorandum of understanding, one of the things, and this was, you know, mentioned by both President Behe and, and you know, Redouan Hussein, you know, the Secretary, National Security Councilor of uh, Prime Minister Abi, recognition seems to be a big component of this memorandum understanding and hopefully potential agreements that that come out of this if ethiopia recognizes somaliland once a deal is finalized do you foresee other countries uh following suit in other words ethiopia being like a big domino i absolutely think so it may not be immediate it may be step by step of, of building international recognition in hargeisa when i went when i was in hargeisa i was i was quite pleasantly surprised at the number of other countries that had diplomatic representation there. You look at those countries that have diplomatic representation and it's um, very easy to switch a, a diplomatic establishment from being a consulate or a liaison office uh, to an embassy. The one thing I would say is it's, it's going to be a process. It's not going to be like switching on a, a light bulb, but with Ethiopian recognition, assuming that it comes, it would be a tremendous step forward because a number of other countries then would feel much, much more comfortable about upgrading their their diplomatic representation. And there might even be some competition because Somaliland has an awful lot to offer you know, other countries. So, no, it's, it's, it's an extremely positive step. And just a quick follow up, and obviously, you know, you you do understand the view from Washington, and and you know, like the the general thinking there. Would 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 you think the United States would be you know one of those countries like again way down the road, obviously, because this is an issue for the regional players. Uh, but again, in all fairness, the United States is also seeking for a potential you know military base in Berbera. 
Now, should Somaliland actually kind of, you know, hold the Washington feet to the fire and say, well, you know, you know, just like Ethiopia, I need a little bit more out of this and, you know, potentially kind of put that in any to place you are better? Yeah, here's the deal. In Washington, there is not unity on this position. The current administration refers to what's called the One Somalia policy, which when I was Assistant Secretary of State, I do not know where this comes from formally because I have never seen a document, you know, that uh, describes a quote unquote one Somalia policy and different uh, executive agencies in Washington also have different views. But at the end of the day, it's the U.S. president who is responsible for U.S. foreign policy. As you know, we have an election coming up in November. So depending on how that election comes out, uh, there might be a, uh, you know, a totally different view of the Horn of Africa coming in with the new administration. So, you know, I can't speak for the current administration. I certainly cannot speak for a future administration. But people have to understand that in Washington, there, there are many points of view, including with Congress. So, again, if Ethiopia provides formal diplomatic recognition to Somaliland, that would be a kind of a huge coin on the scale in favor of eventual America. Thank you, Ambassador. I, but, uh, so I have a question from one of our audience, and, and that is uh, a gentleman by the name of Hamza Khaira. He's actually a member of uh, Somaliland's uh, you know, opposition party, Bodani. And here's his question. In the context of uh, the recent Ethiopian Somaliland Memorandum of Understanding and its implication for the regional dynamics, how might this agreement impact international community's perception and potential recognition of Somaliland? Well, that, that's what we've been talking about. Already, in my view, it, it upgrades the positive image of Somaliland because people are saying, wow, you know, Ethiopia is making a deal with Somaliland. I mean, let, let's be honest. I, I I would gather that probably 80% of American public has never heard of Somaliland, and they probably couldn't distinguish between Somaliland and Somalia. And I, I don't know what the statistics would be in Europe, but around the world, all of a sudden, people are saying, wow, you know, okay, what, what does this mean? People might go to a map and say, oh, wait a minute, here's this, this, it's a fairly small country, but it has an 800-kilometer shore on the Red Sea. And, oh, we've been hearing all about the Red Sea and the importance of how much shipping goes through there, you know, and on and on and on. So so already, in my view, this is a very positive step. Um, like I said, a lot has to be worked out. No deal is final until it has been signed. But the Memorandum of Understanding is a very, very positive step. It's uh, not just Somaliland and, and Somalia and, and Ethiopia. There's also other regional players, like uh, namely Egypt, which has actually, uh, seems to have actually come against, you know, the, the memorandum of understanding, reaffirmed their commitment to Somalia's territorial integrity and all of the usual hope. What do you think is Egypt's problem with this deal? I mean, this is between <laughs> two countries that are neighbors. Maybe Ethiopia is gaining a strategic advantage that it did not have before by accessing the Red Sea. But how do you see the Egyptians actually uh, influencing this? And would this even encourage Prime Minister Abiy even more uh, to get the, you know this deal kind of finalized and going? We have to distinguish different issues because Egypt's problem is not Somali land. Egypt's problem is Ethiopia and the disagreement between the two countries over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. For Egypt, as we all know, the Nile is an existential issue. For decades, even centuries, Egypt has been in the, they have been the higher power on the Nile. Uh, there was always this feeling that Egypt has an entitlement to 100% of the Nile waters, whereas now the power dynamic has shifted somewhat because Ethiopia has come up in the world. So, you know, the Egyptians are having real problems accepting this new geopolitical reality. So that is Egypt's problem. If Egypt and Ethiopia make a deal on the, on the GERD, on the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, then I suspect that their opposition would, would kind of go away.